and uh, it ended up being more of a Islamic bookstore so it had all the books like all the Sira, Tajweed, all of that kind of stuff but long story short I was able to get one like little kids book and that showed it was in a little kids book in Somali so mm, didn't look much of a little kids book to be honest it looked more complicated but I got that just to see just in case it could be more resources to be used but the search still goes on <laughs> online <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, the last time I was here, I the last thing I recorded was me trying to go find the children's book and that did not work out. Um, when I came back, I ended up um, doing some Google search and then I found this website. Um, let me look at it. It's called... So it's a Somali bilingual book project that was launched back in 2006. And they did this collaboration with some Somali authors the coolest part is that there's free downloadable children's book. Free! Oh my god, that's exactly what I was looking for. Some simple children's books so I can hear some read in Somali and test what I've been learning and then slowly build up. So the goal is to look for Somali books. And this website is amazing. Uh, you can download the books for free here and it has both in Somali and in English. We are storytellers and we love to tell stories um, and I loved hearing stories, Somali stories when I was growing up. So having the hard copy and having um, some stories that I can start creating a collection <laughs> of Somali uh, fiction and Somali fairy tale as you might call it. Anyways, the point of this video is to do a monthly review. Let's just pretend January and February is like one month, Jen Berry. Jenberry. It's a new thing. Jenberry. <laughs> Winter has been hard and everything has been a blot. But anyways, this monthly review is mainly to capture three main points. Learnings, challenges, and reflection. Let's just get into it. What have I been learning? I've been focusing on, I've downloaded uh, uh, these gra Somali grammar books online that I found. Pew, 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 pew. Let's see if I can edit that in nicely. <laughs> Future Sabia, enjoy. <laughs> uh, so I've downloaded a few grammar books and I've been just going through it slowly, little by little, trying to make sense of it. I've grown up listening and hearing Somali. My parents spoke Somali at home, but I've never formally studied it. So my focus is right now uh, to just understand the grammatical structure of the language. What I've been doing is trying to go through these books. They're all except for one in Somali and the other one that I have is kind of like a teacher's book and it's it, yeah it's it's not that clear it's, it's really not that helpful so technically I'm just going through three I'm jumping between three different grammar books that are all in Somali so it's a slow process trying to read it understand it look through the dictionary uh, and find what the words mean if I get confused or ask different family members if I get confused. Like, I didn't know the words for masculine and feminine <laughs> when I got to that. So seeing, I'm gonna pronounce this horribly, but dead dig and lub, lab, lub, lab. Anyways, seeing those words, I was so confused. I'm like, what are these two? What is this? And uh, my mom ended up just laughing at me. But. I'm learning, that's that's the whole point. So going through these books, what I've been taking away is every time I like get through a concept and it, it makes sense or I connect it to something I've been hearing before, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know, it just lights up. It just lights up inside me and I'm just like, woo, pew, 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 this is amazing. <laughs> Dopamine rush, I'm getting it. <laughs> so <clears throat> right now, uh, the part I'm at is uh, understanding 
the suffix ending. So these little ending particles that are added to the end of nouns, uh, they're called qadab and there's so many different types. They have different purposes. So it's a lot kind of messy and I'm still trying to get through that and understand that. And another thing that I've been doing is documenting all my learnings, all the fun stuff, all the nerdy stuff, to be honest, uh, on Instagram. And I've just been kind of trying to concise what I've been taking away from these books and make my own little notes and just share it. So if you are learning Somali and you want to come and join me and we can connect on there, that would be awesome. The description below will have all that information. <laughs> you know, you know the drill on YouTube. <laughs> so what have I been finding challenging this month? Immediately two things come to mind. And one of them, I think I'm going to leave it for the reflections because it, it goes more into mindset. So the biggest challenge that I found this month, aside from the mindset one, is the different books that I'm jumping between is confusing. There are different teaching styles, different writing styles, and also they're all published in different times. So I don't know if the grammar has been updated or if it's different ways that Somali is spoken because it is a diverse language and there's various different ways that it's spoken. So maybe it's that this region uh, uh, has this grammatical rule and that region has this grammatical rule. I don't know. It's, I'm just finding it a bit confusing and I'm still looking for a better grammar book that kind of encompasses uh, Somali, the Somali language. Basically, the biggest challenge is the language resources that I have currently are not the best and I'm still in the lookout for more. And that's also why I've been looking for those Somali children's book because I want to supplement the grammar. You're learning the structure and the framework, but how is it used? So two things, if you know any other grammar resources and if you know any Somali books, specifically right now children's book, but eventually I'd like to go up to like young adult and middle, age, middle grade books, um, please write that down below and share it because there are other people that are trying to learn and I would love it and I know other people would love it too. So appreciate ya. Okay next is and i keep i keep looking down so i can make sure i'm on track <laughs> the lessons reflections <laughs> that's what's next reflections of the month i kind of hinted it earlier in the challenges of the month that it's the reflection comes from that challenge which is more of a mindset thing these last couple of months the These last couple of months have been really hard and I've been feeling really weighted down and uh, anyways, these last couple of months have been hard in a nutshell. I've been finding myself procrastinating, um, not being as excited and just letting all my insecurities start coming up and creeping up and just like drowning me, sinking me in. And uh, I read, I've heard a mahma. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مهما ضحوي هل لي راح أركيس مجد لته. Translates as when a she camel sees a lion, her milk disappears. Fear is such a debilitating emotion, and it can engulf you and cause you to not create or do the things that you want to do. And that's what this mahma really brought out to me, and really um, I really connected with because something that you're so passionate about doing you think about it you dream about it it's an idea that just the spark that you see but it just dwindles away because of fear and it's so important to try to understand this fear is what i'm learning this this month these last couple of months uh so i've started i picked up this book called art and fear by david bales and ted orland this book i'm still going through it but the, um, the parts that I've read really stood out to me and it just, they were talking to me directly, to the heart, talked to me directly. And they explained in the book how fear can disguise itself in so many different ways. It can disguise itself as being lazy, uh, comparison to other people, find, distracting yourself by, oh, I need this new item, or I need this, I need that, I can't do this because of I don't have X, Y, and Z. In a nutshell, it keeps you away from doing what it is that you want to do. And they conclude by saying, what separates an artist from X artist is that those who challenge their fears continue. 
and those who don't quit. Seriously, like that's exactly how I felt. I felt like quitting, <laughs> to be honest. I felt like quitting and just giving up. And inshallah, the hope is to challenge fear. I was talking to, another thought, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine and we're having a deep conversation about this. The thing that she said was that being fearless, um, being fearless isn't living life without fear or having courage isn't being that you don't have any fear. It's doing the thing that you need to do, continuing, even though you're feeling the fear. You're challenging the fear as the as Ted and the, as, as the book Art and Fear was talking about, challenging the fear. In conclusion, all in all, aren't those all the words that used to use at the end of writing essays back in high school, <laughs> high school days? In furthermore, in conclusion. <laughs> Anyways, assalamu alaikum. Thanks for listening. That's the end of the monthly review. If there's any of you who's still joining, who wants to connect, follow me on Instagram. Follow on, follow me on Instagram or YouTube. Thanks for all my new subscribers. Love you, love you, love you. May we get through this, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum.